I've been asked to go over Sukuna's history, so let's go over what we know from the Heian era and also some things from the JJK fanbook, but manga spoilers beware. Alright, let's start by going over what we do know of Sukuna's life from the manga, and there's really not much here, but there are a couple of interesting points that are revealed. And starting with his birth, you know, Kashimo asks him, did you earn the title of the strongest, or were you born that way? And he conveniently avoids actually answering the question, but he does tell us that he was born a cursed, unwanted little wretch. He was frowned upon by the world basically from his birth, and we know this to make sense because not only was he a twin, but also potentially a conjoined twin that consumed his brother in the womb and maybe even came out the womb with the four arms, two mouths, four arms, right? So he would have been viewed as an abomination. And here's where we have the biggest gap in information. All we know is that Sukuna became the king of curses, right? Became this absolute calamity on the land that no one could really stop. And here this panel talks about him taking out the elite celestial squad and the five void generals, including some forces from other clans. Basically, people tried to unite and take him down, but they couldn't do it. He was just that much of a problem. So we know Sukuna had his reign of terror over the Heian era, and it's not to say that that ever ended, but things did shift, because after the civilized world threw everything they had at Sukuna and failed, they instead shifted to worshipping him to try and appease him and just save their own lives. And this is referred to here in this panel, where they are having a harvest ritual, and they're like, why are we worshipping a monster like that? And they're basically saying, we have to. You know, he destroyed the Void Generals and the Celestial Squad, we have to just try to appease him so that he'll leave us alone. So that leads us into this period of Sukuna's life, where he's just kind of chilling around bored, because he has already fought against the greatest sorcerers of his era, and he ate them all for lunch, right? So he has nothing to look forward to, nothing to really do, no challenges, nothing that excites him. So this period of his life lasted for some amount of time until he meets up with Kenjaku, who gives him this proposition to become a cursed object and functionally immortal. He can traverse the ages until a new time where there are perhaps new new challengers to satiate his appetite. Which this, of course, leads us into the story of Jujutsu Kaisen as we know it, where a thousand years have passed and Sukuna has now reincarnated to wreak havoc upon the modern era. So all we really know about this guy is he was born back in the Heian era, became a menace, dealt with everything that he could, got bored, and then decided, hey, I'll catch y'all in a thousand years. So yeah, that's pretty much all we know about Sukuna's history from the manga. And shout out to Elder Acorn for asking me this. I'll get out of the way for anybody that wants to read it. But one thing he mentioned was if there's anything from the supporting materials that sheds any light on this. And not really, but there is some stuff from the fan book that is interesting. So I'm going to cover that as well. So this is just going to be read a long time with me, or you can pause and read it yourself. But uh, Gege reveals that his hobbies are eating and his dislikes are nothing in particular. He doesn't really care about anything other than himself. It's mentioned that Sukuna was a human who actually existed in this world. When he was alive, was he a curse user? You could say he's a curse user, but I think it's closer to being a natural disaster. Does he have any memories of being human? He does, but whether Sukuna himself or those around him perceived him as human is unclear. When he was a human, was he as feared as Gojo is today? It can't be compared to Gojo. That's not to say he wasn't feared, but in the past, both sorcerers and curses were more vicious than they are today. It's like it gradually calmed down and then started to heat up again after Gojo burst onto the scene. When he was human, how was he treated by the people around him? They were terrified of him. Before and after becoming a cursed object, he was always known as the King of Curses. What is Sugana's great pleasure? To eat. How much do human beings know about Sukuna's curse technique? If they did their reading, they should be able to figure out some details about his slashing technique. It's possible they don't have any ideas about the flames. In some places, Ryoman Sukuna is considered a great being or the face of local specialty products in some areas. Will such background be reflected in your work? No, the Sukuna character in Jujutsu Kaisen is called Sukuna because he resembles and is powerful like Sukuna. Did Sukuna have a wife and children when he was alive? No, Uruume is his servant slash minion. Gojo said that Itadori is also a detector to search for Sukuna's fingers. Was his statement accurate? The only thing he was wrong about was predicting that Sukuna was trying to regain his power by gathering other fingers. Did you plan on introducing Ryom and Sukuna when you made Volume Zero? Nope. 
And then one final thing I'll add here is that it's not really about Sukuna's history from the manga, but it's about the real-life inspiration behind Sukuna that Gege was inspired by. And this is something I talked about in a video from a couple months back, so for those of you interested, I'm going to link it down in the pinned comments on YouTube. Next up, I have a pair of very kind questions from Kaizo Kumar and Potentially Great, who wanted to know a bit more about me and how I have so much knowledge on JJK and how did I become so analytical and effective at communicating that analysis. And I wish I had like a better answer here, but no, I'm not a lawyer or in dev work or anything. I would say that this has just always been a passion of mine, I guess. Um, with any media I consume, whether it be literature, a television show, a movie, an anime, if I enjoy it, then one of my favorite parts is just diving in headfirst and seeing what I can find in it. Like, I love, absolutely love talking theories with other people and seeing other people's interpretations and analysis. I love writing, so that's probably like a big part of where this comes from. I'm not a professional writer or anything, but uh, writing I've been doing my whole life in various forms. So I think I just really love dissecting and experiencing a story. So if anything, I would just say it's like more of a passion and a hobby than coming from like a profession if you will but thank you both for the kind words and potentially great also wanted to know if i had a curse technique what would it be uh now i'm not sure if you're asking me to like custom create one which i would need more time for but i i have that on the back burner because some people have been asking for that also plug for the discord we've got a whole custom curse technique forum so come check that out if uh, if that's your jam but if I could just pick from a curse technique that already exists in the world of JJK, Infinity would obviously be awesome, but I feel like that's, we're just going to exclude Infinity. Um, I would say probably uh, Uiui's technique, the teleportation, especially now we know that it could be soul swapping as well. I feel like that would be a very nice technique to have in the real world. Like, boom, I'm halfway across the world. So that's probably what I'd go with. And then finally, for any other media recommendations for JJK fans. Ah, man. I mean, I'm trying to think of something that is, like, in the same vein as JJK, especially if we're talking, like, anime or manga. Obviously, Hunter x Hunter, which is one of the biggest inspirations for JJK, um, Yu Yu Hakusho as well. Uh, I did put out a video a while back on, like, my top five, or maybe it was even top ten animes and mangas, so... If, if I remember, I'm going to link that down below, but especially if you haven't read Hunter x Hunter, which admittedly I'm not caught up on, but if you like JJK, that would probably be my first place to direct you. And then finally, we got this question from Jojo, which is kind of in the ballpark of what we're talking about with Sukuna at least. And he just wants to know, Fire Arrow versus Hollow Purple. And, you know, not much context was given here, so I'm going to have to assume the situation, the circumstances. And to just make it really clean, since I think you're just talking about the attacks and not necessarily like a fight between Gojo and Sukuna, I'm going to assume that this is a situation like with Jogo and Sukuna, where, you know, Jogo used his fire against Sukuna's fire. Fire arrow. So it was just a battle of the techniques, if you will. And under those circumstances, I'm giving it to Hollow Purple because I think just in a vacuum, Hollow Purple is stronger than the Fire Arrow because this isn't the Fire Arrow in conjunction with Sukuna's domain expansion. This is just like the normal Fire Arrow. So for that reason, I'm going Hollow Purple, but I would love to hear y'all's thoughts on that. Anyways, y'all, that's all for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.